Welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another one in my canal series. Today I'm in Somerset, North East Somerset to be precise. I'm near the village of Timsbury. I'm going to walk along what is known as the Coal Canal Way to the village or just outside of the village of Poulton. Today we're on the Somerset Coal Canal, one of the most profitable canals on the entire network. Now, finding out information about this canal is quite difficult. I have a book, a shell book of British waterways, and it devotes just one paragraph to this canal. There is some bits and pieces on the internet. There also is a canal trust looking to reopen and restore sections of it. So there's useful information on there. So I'll put a lot of the information today will be on photographs. If I can find some archive ones, I'll put them in too. And also there'll be information along the bottom of the screen. But in the meantime, enjoy the walk over towards the village of Bolton from here in Timsbury in North East Somerset. Now we have the abutments of a bridge here, which once carried the GWR branch for Camerton towards Halitro. Now the railways in this area are quite complex and you're probably thinking, well I thought we were talking about a canal. Well, the canals were very profitable in this area, so the GWR muscled in because of the amount of coal tonnage that was freighted up and down the Cam Valley that they then built an extension from their existing branch at Camerton to Halitro, which is just in kind of the general direction that we're walking. This buttons of this bridge carried the railway tracks over here. The other thing worth noting that this railway line was once used for two particular films. One was the Ghost Train and the other one was the Titfield Thunderbolt. Now there was once a halt here too, called Radford and Timsbury Halt. Passenger services were somewhat limited. They started around the start of the 20th century and I think they stopped during the First World War and only started sporadically after that. Now the Halitro to Camerton section of the line closed in 1932 and the section from Camerton to Limpley Stoke where it joined up with the main line between Bath and Westbury carrying all the coal carried on to 1952 some 20 years later. But we're seeing today is what evidence remains of the Somerset Coal Canal along which much of the railway was once built along the top of so behind me here is where the railway went over that bridge where we just saw the abutments while I was doing that piece to camera. And the railway continued down here in towards the direction of Poulton. There's some canal basins down there and that's what we're making our way down to. But the footpath doesn't continue along there. It actually goes down the bank here, turn right. The other thing to tell you about the footpath, as well as it being the Coal Canal link, it's also part of the limestone link too. And I put the full details scrolling across the screen now, all about the limestone link that passes through this area and does a connection up onto the Cots would weigh. Now I'll admit that's not something I was expecting. We've got the original telegraph poles. Now the railway that I was talking about ran up there to the other side of those bushes. But the Somerset Coal Canal at this point is completely separate and it is here. Now that's terrific because it is got water in it because we've had so much rain but also because it's so cold today it's also frozen so we'll take a closer look at that. Now it looks like that the volunteers from the Somerset Coal Canal Trust have been doing some restoration here of the original brickwork which is fantastic to see. That looks like it's been put in place fairly recently and down there you can clearly make out the original course of the Somerset Coal Canal. In there too is an old water pump. I'm not sure if that's related to the canal at all, whether it's just agricultural, but it's still fascinating to see and somebody's gone to some considerable trouble to put a quite a quality fence around it. You can just make it out there like an off-coloured green in the centre of all those fences. So yeah, there's our uh, leaning telegraph poles. Normally you see them next to railway lines. Well, at this point here we're between the railway line and the canal. Again it's the restored section that uh, 
Not sure if it would have been a lock at this point, and that's I think what they're restoring here. I'm now going to continue the journey on the towpath on the other side of this beautiful, sparklingly white section of the Somerset Coal Canal. Now clearly I'm not going to be able to cover the entirety of the Somerset Coal Canal all the way back through to Limpley Stoke today. So this will be the first and an occasional and short series about the Somerset Coal Canal. And if you have any memories, any knowledge or know anything else about this coal canal, both the Coal Canal Trust and myself on YouTube or on my Facebook group, love to hear from you. Even better if you've got any old photographs of it too. That would be quite something if you have. Beautiful day again. I did a Cotswold walk one which went up today uh, and I filmed that a few days ago. Had beautiful blue sunshine and we're blessed with that again today. The advantage today is that it's colder but that's good in a way because it means that the ground is frozen so it makes it far less muddy so that's a, a real boon and anyway it's good to see the sun out but just to see this sheet of white lying inside the canal bed there is just a fantastic sight. I don't certainly don't want to walk along it because uh, I don't want to slip up but uh, yeah that's uh, amazing to see. Now the River Cam itself, as I said, we're in the Cam Valley, just lies a few metres below me on a gradient. So you've got the canal above that on a higher gradient and the railway above that again on a yet a higher gradient. Sorry, I got into shadow there just going through the trees. There's some very strange fence posts here, look kind of oddly mysterious. I'm thinking after the canal closed it probably marked or delineated a section that was in private ownership. I'll just give you a clip of that now. So yeah, those posts there look like they were made from uh, railway rails, which would have come from the uh, railway when that closed in 1932, just a few metres up the contour above the canal. Now that there just behind me screams old Station Holt. I'm not sure if it is or it's another building that's been added for agricultural purposes, but it's certainly right by the side of the former track bed. I'll see if I can get a closer look. So yeah, I'm thinking it does look a little bit too new and I'm not sure if it's in exactly the right spot, but interesting nonetheless. That's our railway track that went along there. So walking through the grounds of on the public right of way I hasten to add, I'm not trespassing, of Radford Mill, and I just looked at the sign there, that looks like they rear organic turkeys. I don't eat meat myself, I'm vegetarian, but uh, it's good to know that they're being grown, or reared should I say, organically. It's certainly a better thing than uh, the usual mass produced. If you fancy exploring this canal for yourself, one thing to note, sorry about the extreme light and shade here, it's because I've got the trees there so I might go a bit overexposed and underexposed, is that uh, parking around here is very tricky. You can't park anywhere near the start or this entrance that I've just come onto the uh, Coal Canal footpath. I actually parked in Timsbury itself in the village and walked down the hill. I'll insert a clip of the map now so you can see where I parked and the route I took to access the start of the footpath. But uh, yeah, so I'm having to walk in a zigzag fashion because uh, the mud there where the ice has uh, just just melted. Sorry about that. But yeah, so it, it is tricky parking around here. Don't try and attempt to park at the entrance of the footpath because it is private and you will block an entrance way. And uh, the road there is also on a bend and it's quite narrow. So if you're coming down that hill as well, be careful of the traffic but once you get onto this section of the footpath it is indeed rather lovely. And I think someone there is going to be rather hopeful hoping that this section of the canal is going to fill up with water again so they can go fishing on it from this little uh, jetty or fishing pontoon but uh, alas at the moment despite all the heavy rain 
this canal bed remains dry. So how did this Somerset Coal Canal get the coal from all the coal fields in this area to market and where were the markets? Well we have touched on a little section of the Somerset Coal Canal before where it joins the Kennet and Avon Canal and that was on my Dundas Aqueduct video. There is a small section of the Somerset Coal Canal that's been completely restored. It's quite narrow and usually you've got kayakers going up and down it and it leads into a small private marina just off the K&A there. If I can dig out the clip of that with a kayakers, I can't remember whether a kayakers or canoeist, but uh, I remember uh, getting a bit of footage of that. If I've got that, I will uh, insert that roundabout now. So yeah, that's where the canal starts or ends, if you prefer. So we're walking to the, the terminus just outside the village of Poulton here. Let's see what I can see. We've got something really interesting here, which I'm going to show you in a second. But yeah, so it uh, was freighted out of all the collieries. There were little spurs and branches off it as well. And I'll put some details of that. Perhaps we'll explore that. There was actually a canal tunnel near the village of Wellow, somewhere we've been to previously on the channel but I wasn't aware of the canal tunnel there at the time that I made that video and the, it was freighted out up towards London and the southeast along the Canae and A towards Reading and then thence the Thames and then it could also go on the K and A to, to link up at uh, Symington Lock onto the uh, Wilson Barks and then to the Wilson Barks onto the North Wilts and onto the Thames and Seven, Stradwater up the Seven and into the heart of the industrial West Midlands too. Now it's good here to see the brickwork in what looks like a basin, it's certainly opened out in width here. So perhaps this was a loading point for the canal for coal, I'm not sure. I'll see if I can, what I can find out, and again I'll drop that in the usual way with the subtitle. But it looks like it has gone undergone some restoration in recent times to avoid it collapsing and the bank falling into the bed of the canal. So it is in very good condition at this point here, terrific to see. I'm now at a location called Withy Mills and at this point here, lots of things happened. There was originally a bridge and the colliery was just on the hill on the slope on the opposite side there. So this was also a stop lock. Now stop locks are used not to get the water level up in terms of a change of a gradient along the canal route, but to literally stop the water off in case there are breach, a canal breach to avoid all of the water draining out of the canal along its entire length. Now up on the bank of the hill there used to be Withy Mills Colliery and there was also an inclined plane like a tramway which brought the coal down in trucks so it could then be emptied into tugboats going along the Somerset Coal Canal and out onto the K&A and onto the markets as I mentioned previously. Now it's only fairly recently that I've been starting to delve into more about the Somerset Coal Canal. In terms of restoration products on the Canal Network, it's certainly one of the much lower profile ones. Obviously the one closer to me, the Stradwater and Thames and Seven Canal, the Cotswold Canals, and also the Litchfields Canal being restored, the uh, ongoing maintenance of the K&A, and also the Monty, and I'm trying to think of a few others, a few others that are pretty hope oh yes of course the wilts and barks how could i forget that lots of things going on with those but this one seems to get far less publicity and i'm more than happy to reset the balance with this video which will be the start of a series of videos looking at the somerset coal canal and there is a lot of work taking place here to restore this lock here Now we have a most delightful section here. 
Obviously that's been artificially blocked off there to form a small lake, but that's completely frozen over today, but it's reflecting the blue sky, so it looks absolutely stunning. But that's not all of the canal treasures in this section of the Somerset Coal Canal. Now it looks like the bridge there over this small berthing point of wharf. We've got some more details on the plaque there. I'll uh, have a read up on that and uh, share with you some of the uh, information that's on those signs and take a photograph so you can pause the video too. So this is Poulton Basin, complete with its dry dock, known to be the biggest surviving dry dock anywhere in the country. When the canal was constructed starting in 1795, they started at this section here at Poulton first, and then as soon as they built the canal section, they opened a dry dock alongside it, big enough for three boats. Unfortunately, the collieries and the Somerset coalfield started closing in this part of Somerset first, as early as the 1860s, and it was this part of the Somerset Coal Canal which started to fall out of use around that time. There are also extensive buildings around this wharf area, but none of those survive apart from this beautiful little bridge. If you're a canal aficionado like me, I know some of you that watch my channel aren't, but just dip into the canal series. This is just a fantastic location. First of all, it's peace and quiet here. There's no roads or even railways or planes flying overhead at the moment. We just can hear the birds and the water on the river cam flowing too. And you have all this remaining industrial archeology span in this fantastic site, also on a beautiful crisp winter's day. In 1791, one William Smith, then just 22 years old, arrived in this area and surveyed it for geology before the Somerset Coal Canal could be constructed. Of course that was of great use to the coal mines or the owners of the coal mines too, so they could identify the biggest seams of coal in the area. He went on to be known as the father of geology and Strata Smith, and he completed many geological maps of the British Isles. So going to cross over the canal at this point, so it's been infilled a little bit there and we've got that lagoon or lake here on the side that's frozen over and continue our way down to the terminus of the Somerset Coal Canal. Hope you're enjoying the tour so far. So I've just crossed over the muddy water-bogged field just to go into railway mode. Yes, I know this is a canal series, but the canal and the railway are interlinked along this section here. So the railway is just a bit higher than the canal. And you have the remains of what looks like an accommodation bridge here, but certainly quite some, still some structural pieces here. Yes, so that's the railway running back towards Camerton and Limpley Stoke with a connection to the Bath Westbury Main Line. This section over here, while well, the railway went across this, well, farmer's track essentially, heading down towards the terminus of the branch.
Now the spoil tip there, now looking pleasant and greened over, was once coal spoils from the Poulton engine colliery. It's now banked by a weir and operated by Wessex Water. So we're now at Timsbury Basin, which is the end of the Somerset Coal Canal, or perhaps the beginning, because the work started here first, some ten and a half miles from the junction with the Kennet and Avon Canal at Dundas Aqueduct. So I am shooting into the sun, but just behind me here is where the colliery was. You can just make out part of the one of the buildings that form the colliery. I think the shafts are to one side of where the, the cottages are. Currently, they maybe they house the uh, the coal miners that work down on the coal face, down on the ground. But you can also see this enormous coal spoil tip from a better angle on this footpath here. So I'm now looking down on the Timsbury Canal Basin, which was the terminus of the Somerset Coal Canal. But as we said, this is where the construction of the canal started first. There were many buildings here for the wharfage on the canal. Sadly, none of them remain, but I managed to find a photograph of what the canal looked like in the 19th century with all the buildings that serviced the needs of the Somerset Coal Canal at this end of it. So I've now come back to Poulton Basin just to wrap today's video up. As I say, this will be a first in a series of videos about the Somerset Coal Canal. Come back here occasionally. There is a magnificent flight of locks here. It also connects up around the area of the Somerset and Dorset Railway, something we haven't explored in the railway series on West Country Wanderings yet either. So hope to put that right before too long. Hope you enjoyed the little wander along the canal, Somerset Coal Canal, here in Somerset on West Country Wanderings. Love to know what you think please drop a comment below. As I say, I'm not an expert on this canal. You've probably got more knowledge of me about it or explored it yourself. Love to know. Love to hear from you in the comments or over on my Facebook group, West Country Wanderings. Love to hear from you there too. Until next time, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye.